In this lecture, we're going to take a look at the difference between an absolute and a relative reference inside of Microsoft Excel. So let's get ready. Let's jump into the exercise file and let's take a look at the differences. Open in front of you, I've got the example file and I'm going to provide a download link in the description below. So make sure that you download the file, follow along with me and practice these concepts. In this workbook, I've got three worksheets and I'm currently looking at the relative reference worksheet. And I've got a simple little list here, nothing big. It's got an ID column, a product, a unit price quantity, and we have been tasked with filling out the totals for each of these records. So in this first example here, let's take a look at creating a formula utilizing relative references to the cells that will generate this formula. So in the very first row here, I want to create a formula that really just simply takes the unit price for that row and multiplies it by the quantity to give me the total for this record. And then I want to perform those same actions for every row here. Take the unit price, multiply it by the, the quantity. Next row, take the unit price, multiply it by the quantity, and so on. Well. Here's where the beauty of a relative reference comes into play within your formulas. I'm going to start a formula. I'm just inside of cell E2. And I say equals. And I'm just going to say, okay, from this location, go over to C3, or excuse me, C2, get that cell reference. Then we're going to multiply that. I'll bring in the asterisk. And I'm going to say, go grab cell D2. Now in this formula, and like I said, it's a simple little formula, just two cell references and performing some simple math with the multiplication. So I'm gonna say C2, multiply that by D2, those two cell references. Now these references are what are called a relative reference. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, a relative reference just says, from the location of the formula, we're gonna go two cells to the left, and we're gonna get C2, there it is. Then we're gonna go one cell to the left and get D2. This is relative referencing. So the benefit here is now I need to get this to happen for every row in this table. Well, I can copy that formula, literally copy paste. If I select that cell, control C on my keyboard, drop down to the next row, control V for paste, we're done. I've now created that same formula, but if I give that a double click, what's different here? What's different? There's still two cell references, right? And we're still multiplying, but what changed? Well, in this case, because it got copied down, the row reference changed. We're now saying, okay, from this location, go two cells to the left, get cell C3, it's right there, and then multiply that by one cell to the left, D3. Done, we're golden. This is the power of a relative reference. And really all I need to do now, finish that off, I can grab the little autofill command, that little box in the corner, grab that, drag it down, and it will populate all the answers right there for me. And if we look at each of the formulas here, it's still two references, multiplication, but it's changing the location, so it's a new row. Still C column, still D column, but now it's C4 and D4. Or the next one becomes C5 and D5, and so on. This is a relative reference. Here's a little pro tip for you. I'm gonna undo this. Let's get back to just the first one there. I need to fill this up for hundreds or thousands of records. Here's a pro tip. That little box in the corner, it's your autofill command. As long as you have data directly next door to the column you wanna fill up, you just give the autofill a double click and it will populate all hundreds or thousands of records that you got there. Just double click the little autofill command, done. Does it for you. Beauty, love it. Any little shortcuts like that, I, I love them inside of Excel. So again, relative referencing, right? C2, D2, multiply it, done, copy, paste it, you're done, autofill it, you're done, right? Woo, love it. So now, let's take this a step further. Next worksheet, absolute reference zero one. Now here, the very similar setup with a slight twist. 
Still got an ID, still got a product name, a unit price quantity, and then a total column that we need to fill out. But this time we're gonna include an 8% tax rate on top of these, these sales that are happening here. So I still wanna get a total. I still wanna take the unit price and multiply it by the quantity. We saw that, we could do that, no problem, right? But this time, we then need to get the 8% increase on top of that total. So every formula here, or every total, we know, we know it needs the unit price and it needs the quantity. And those two things are gonna change based on which row we are putting the formula in whether that's C4 and D4 or C5 and D5 or C6 and D6 and so on. But every single row, every single row also needs to make a reference to this 8%, which is inside of cell D1. D1, right? So every formula needs that. Well, let's take a look at how to do this. So I'm gonna jump into my first cell, E4 there. Still going to create a formula. So here I'm going to say, go get the C4 cell, multiply that by the D4 cell. We're good there so far. Now, I want to take that, the results of that, and I'm going to multiply it by the D1 cell plus one. Now, there's a little bit of math that's happening here in the background. Uh, that we're really not seeing at the surface. It's in the background of Excel. This 8% here is actually being stored inside of Excel as 0.08. It's a decimal percentage. I've just formatted that 0.08 as a percentage, so we're getting a whole number percentage of 8%. Now, what we're doing here is we're taking that value, 0.08, and we're adding 1 to it. So this is going to give us a result of 1.08. Or if it's formatted as a percentage, we'll get 108%. Okay. So that's all that's doing right there. Adding one to it, we're now getting the 1.08 or 108%. Let's pop that off my screen there. Okay. We got our formula. C4 times D4 times the results of D1 plus 1. 108%. I'm going to hit my enter key. There's my result. So initially it was $168 without the tax, but with the 8% increase, we've now got $108.44. All right. Now, what happens if I copy this down? Remember all of our references right now, cell references, these are relative referencing. So C4, well, that's two cells to the left. D4, that's one cell to the left. D1, that's one, two, three cells up and one cell to the left. Now keep that in mind. Because now if I copy that down, I'll just use the autofill here. Is that right? Is that right? Look at that. Is that is that right? Let's see. Now, this is the first one's right. I know that one's right. Second one, $9.80 times 10. Oh, but wait. $98. That's the results of this, the multiplication here, but what about the 8% increase? Or why am I getting an error here? Or or what is going on? 18,000, 18,000, five. That's not right. That's that that's definitely not right. What's going on here? Well, remember our first formula was using the relative referencing. Remember D1. Here's where we're gonna focus. D1 was one, two, three cells up, one cell to the left. We copied that down. We used the autofill, went to the next row. Oh, D2. Well, remember it was one, two, three cells up, one cell to the left. That's an empty cell. The value one, D3, well, it can't multiply by a text value, by, core, uh, by a quantity. That's not going to work. So here, let me undo, control Z back, get back to that original formula. Remember D1, every single formula, every single row here needs to reference D1. That can't change. That needs to be absolute, right? Every formula needs that. So what I'm gonna do to make this an absolute, 
I'm going to place dollar signs before the column reference and before the row reference. This is absolute. D1 is now the absolute reference. So if I hit my enter key and then I copy that down, I've now got the proper results. 181.44 for the first one, 105.84 for the next, and so on. Looks much better. No errors, no huge astronomical numbers inside there. We've now got the proper results. And every formula is now referencing D1, D1, D1. It's all there. It's an absolute reference. By placing the dollar signs before the column and before the row reference, D1 is now absolute. All right, try this out. Make sure you download the file. Try out the relative reference inside there. Just some simple multiplication between two col or yeah, between two cells, and then hop over to the absolute reference and try it out there as well. But remember the dollar signs. Oh, here's a little pro tip for you. If I get back to this first one here, let's delete out those dollar signs for a moment. If I highlight the cell reference within the formula, like D1 here, on my keyboard, top of my keyboard, I got my function keys, F1, F2, F3, and so on. On a Windows machine, I can highlight the cell reference, hit F4, and it'll drop in the dollar signs for me. That's it. If you're on a Mac, you can highlight the cell reference and use Command Shift T, T like Tango. And you can get the absolute reference in there for you as well. And once you got that, give the autofill a double click and have it populate for every row. Try this out, download the file, try out the two exercises. I got a third worksheet inside there. This is gonna be a little more of a challenge for you because uh, I'm gonna include something very similar, but this time there's an external table that will give you the shipping rate based on the country. Now I'm gonna provide the proper answer here inside the comments down below. Uh, you can try it out yourself first, see if you can get it to work for you. Uh, and if you're looking for some answers, you can take a look at the comments section and see the proper answer there. But this one's going to, little tip, little tip. This one's gonna include the VLOOKUP or the index match pairing. I'll leave that up to you. If you haven't gone through a VLOOKUP or an index match, you can take a look at my course on Udemy and I'll walk you through how to utilize the VLOOKUP and index match functions. You can also take a look at other videos that I have on YouTube that cover those topics as well. So if you've liked this, this uh, little bit of a tip here with absolute and relative referencing and this type of material, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe so you get notifications when new videos arrive on my channel. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed giving you the information and I'll see you in the next video.